Have you ever wondered what is better, car gas or ab gas for your airplane? It would make sense, right? What is gonna be better? But today we're actually gonna find out in this Cessna 170. So what we've got is ab gas in one wing, we've got car gas in the other wing, and we've got a fuel selector that lets us pick left or right tank. So we're going to run this thing up at two power settings, 23 squared, which is normal cruise flight. We're gonna use the Dynon panel that we have in here with the four place CHT EGT to actually show us what's happening with the engine during all of that. We're gonna lean it out for best power, best performance. And then we're going to switch from auto fuel over to 100 low lead to see what kind of performance we get and vice versa. We'll also be measuring our thrust that we get out of the engine with this handy dandy little scale that we have behind the airplane. So both at 23 squared, at cruise power and at full power, what is going to make the most power for your engine? What is going to be best for temperatures, longevity, all that good stuff. Now there's a whole lot more that goes into this than just temperatures, but luckily with that Dynon HDX, it's gonna tell us a whole lot about what's going on with our engine. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and check it out. Okay, we are in here, we are warming up. Uh, we are running on the left tank at the moment. The left tank is going to be our Avgas. Uh, we've got, oh, about just shy of 250 on the cylinders, and we're gonna want that to be a little bit warmer there, so we're gonna let that warm up here. Also got this lovely TFR in effect over the whole area right now, so we're not doing any flying today, so great day for one of these test videos. Um, go ahead and bring that back over. All right, so we're getting up just about 250. We're above 100 on the oil temp, so well, good enough. We're leaned out here a little bit as we're sitting here warming up. Let's go ahead and just go full rich to start with, just so we're kind of all, you know, testing apples to apples. We'll go ahead and throttle up. I'm gonna take up some slack here on our rope until it jerks me to a stop. Trying to not hit the 140 in the meantime. And all right, there is my rope. <laughs> all right, so I'm stopped now. I'm gonna start throttling up here for 23 squared. Come on, buddy, there we go, 2300, 22 and a half. There we go, 23, I'm surprised anybody's flying right now with the TFR. Cool, and there's our temps, right? So that's how everything's looking. We're gonna go ahead and start leaning this back. to what I would consider like decent, you know, cruise numbers, something around 1350 on the EGTs. Uh, I'd like to be under 1400 if possible, just knowing this plane a little bit, so I'll rich up a hair. Cool, so there we are, 10.7 gallons an hour, 10.6, that's pretty typical for cruise in here. Uh, 23 squared, 10.6 gallons an hour. Everything seems pretty normal to me. Still running on av gas. And we're gonna have Rick go ahead and go back there, get a reading on what our uh, thrust numbers are as we're running here on av gas. He gave us a good thumbs up, so now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to auto gas on the right side, and let's see what we see, if anything changes here. So far, EGTs are all still pretty normal there. I would expect this to take a good 20, 30 seconds to really see much in the way of difference, and I would expect EGTs to climb burning auto gas. We can see cylinder temps are getting warm, because yeah, we're not flying, so that's certainly not gonna help us any. And EGTs are coming up just a hair, but not by much. RPM did drop a hair, and I'd say at this point, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set Red back over there for one more uh, reading on the static thrust to see if our numbers have changed. Now we see EGTs are coming down a touch, haven't touched any of the controls. The only thing that's really changing here, the only variable, is the cylinders are getting warmer, but not terribly so. Uh, we're just going to keep a close eye there and then probably let this thing cool down for a little bit uh, before we go ahead and do our full power run up. We can see manful pressures creeped up on us a hair, but nothing's changed on the actual settings on the controls. Cool, all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and throttle back here. We're going to let our motor cool down for a minute and then we'll go ahead and do that full power test because, yeah, seeing 400 on the cylinder is like, yeah, it's a touch bit on the warm side. So we'll go ahead and just idle nice and low here. And then for this part, we are gonna have to go ahead and turn you guys upside down and put you back here because I'm gonna have to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on. I'm gonna probably have to hold onto this yoke just in case this thing tries to get away from me. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bring power up. 
This time we're full power and we're full rich. And we're just gonna do the testing that way. That's gonna help keep our temps down. So full power, full rich. And I'm ready to rip this thing back if one of those ropes does break. Temperatures, we can see 1275, 1268, 1350, 1330 for EGTs, about almost 18 gallons an hour flow. All right, to be apples to apples here, we're gonna stay full rich uh, as we're doing our car gas. We already are on car fuel, been running on that for a little bit. So it should be all cleared out of the carburetor, all that low lead's cleared out of there, and now it's just auto gas uh, on that side. And let's go ahead and bring it back up, and then we'll send Rhett back to the wind tunnel. Go ahead and get a reading back there for us on what our static thrust numbers are gonna be. There goes Rhett. Here's our numbers. So seeing 1250, 1300, funny enough, seeing lower EGTs, it seems. Uh, 1350, it's creeping up there. Seeing about the same RPM, seeing about the same fuel flow. Maybe a touch less on the fuel flow, oddly enough. Don't really know why that would be. And those EGTs are getting a little higher now, pushing 1400. He's back, he says we're good. Let's go ahead and throttle on back. We'll let this thing cool on down. After I shut down, Rhett came over with some interesting news that he thought that it actually produced more power on car gas than on av gas. So we tried to rationalize that, that perhaps the av gas, the leaded fuel was running almost effectively a little bit richer and cooler. The only thing I could think of is that in my experience, car gas runs hotter on EGTs. Yeah. So it's already like leaned out per se. Um, whereas the MoGas, or I'm sorry, the Avgas might need some leaning okay. to make more power. Yeah. We can do one more you didn't test. Do the leaning it out? I didn't lean for best power. Let's do one more test. Lean it out and see. I'll lean it for best power yeah. on the just on the Avgas. Yeah. And we'll see, see if we if can hit those similar any... numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I'll yeah, fire back sweet. up and I'll warm it up. And according to Rhett, he's saying that, you know, we're getting a lot more power on the auto fuel. So we're gonna see if we can get more power on the av gas just by leaning it out more. So I'm gonna start bringing it in here. There's full power. And now let's go ahead and lean. We can even use the lean tool functionality in here to get us up to peak. Now we're peaking a lot higher there. I'm gonna richen it up just a hair and see if we can get any more power out of that. Yeah, we're up in the 1400s. All right, so car gas, av gas, doesn't really make a difference, guys. And we kind of had that feeling to begin with because I've never noticed a difference in power in flight. I have noticed over time that sometimes EGTs run a little higher running auto fuel, and so I tend to run a little bit richer. Uh, or lean out a little bit less, and maybe I'm burning five or 10% more fuel. That's a problem when you're in the backcountry and you're trying to stretch your fuel over very long distances and you only have so much that you have in the tanks. But when you talk about you know flying in the lower 48 where there's a lot of airports around or you're doing more local flights, auto fuel is generally half of actual av gas. And what's amazing here in Alaska is ethanol is illegal. So when we go to the gas station, we buy 87 at the pump, we're buying ethanol free gas. We're not paying extra for ethanol free gas like you might in Florida. So bottom line, all this nonsense about we got to get rid of lead out of the fuel and blah, blah, probably doesn't really make a difference for us. Obviously there's some legalities and STCs, but if the FA would loosen up just a little bit and realize that these things run just fine on auto fuel, now, longevity-wise, you might say, but John, your cylinders, you're gonna have to overhaul your engine. I've run thousands of hours of car gas through Lycoming motors and Continental motors. I've probably done more maintenance, more cylinder replacements, more exhaust repairs, all that stuff, on motors that were running av gas. Now, I, this isn't like a, a black and white thing where it's like car gas is better than av gas, but just in general, I've hung more cylinders on airplanes. I've had less engines make it to TBO before needing cylinders running av gas than when I was running car gas. I've had way less sticky valves. I've had way cleaner spark plugs. Overall, I've had a way better experience, less maintenance cost, more longevity in the motor running car gas. And I have had motors that I've taken to 3000 hours plus 
on auto fuel, occasionally getting some low lead along the way when you're popping into town or you're at an airport and they don't have auto fuel available, you're not at home where you have your own tank. But really in a perfect world, what you should know is that these motors were designed to run on about 20 to 25% the amount of lead that's actually contained in 100 low lead. So in a perfect world, if you wanted to give it what the engineers designed for, you would actually give it about 75% car gas and 25% low lead. And you could just take a 500 gallon tank and put 100, 120 gallons of gas, the rest car gas, and pump that into your airplane, and that would be running it perfectly. Now, as far as octane, you're like, well, 87 is less than 100. Yeah, but they were designed for like 80 octane. And if you're running normal pistons, eight and a half to ones or less, probably no issue. If you ever were worried about detonation or any of that stuff, throttle back. If you're at higher density altitudes, higher elevations, no issue. So really, Overall, I can't find a pro avgas argument other than sometimes it's legally required by the FAA, which we know, although well-intentioned, isn't necessarily the best solutions that they come up with. And aside from that, it's cheaper, it's better, it makes the same or more power or less or about the same. It's all good. Either way, yes, there's vapor lock issues and there's all these things, but I've never had engine failures with auto fuel and it starts a lot easier in the winter. And for at least us here in Alaska, it works great. So if your airplane is STC'd for it or can be an STC, again, typically doesn't modify the airplane anyway. It literally just is a sticker that you put on there. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it's a few hundred bucks, it goes in the log books, and then you can legally run it in your airplane. I would highly recommend it. Obviously do what's legal for your airplane, Love the experimental world. Love Mosaic that's coming out. Hopefully that'll loosen things up for us as well. And if you guys have any questions or thoughts or opinions on this, because I'm sure people do, we're pilots, guys, right? Have you ever met a pilot without an opinion? Never have, actually. So go ahead and leave your thoughts, opinions, experiences on your own down in the comments below for us. And as always, if you cannot fly every day, fly 8 We'll see you guys in the next one.